The euphoric joy from Dr. John Forsyth was palpable. Freshly divorced, the 49-year-old father of seven had recently found love again and proposed to his new partner. Life seemed to be on the upswing as he enthusiastically embarked on a cryptocurrency venture alongside his brother. However, this idyllic scene was to be cruelly disrupted. Mere three days after his proposal... Forsyth exited his hospital shift in the heartland of the Missouri Ozarks, expressing his anticipation to see his fiance soon. And this was the last time Forsyth was seen or heard from. Nine excruciating days of frantic searching came to a devastating conclusion on May 30th, when a kayaker discovered Forsyth's lifeless body floating in an Arkansas lake. An ominous precursor to this discovery was the finding of his car, unlocked and abandoned at a nearby aquatic center. Forsyth's personal belongings included his passport, wallet, two cell phones, laptop, and RV keys, all left undisturbed in the vehicle. The sharp contrast to Forsyth's promising future and his sudden unexplicable disappearance left his bereaved family in a state of profound shock and longing. For answers. Forsyth's last recorded movements were captured on the morning of May 21st upon concluding a shift at Mercy Hospital in Cassville, scheduled a secluded town deep within the Missouri Ozarks. Forsyth reached out to his fiance, his text message full of promise and plans abruptly ceased and he was later seen heading towards his RV that he often used for resting between shifts. The silence following these moments was deafening. Forsyth was known for his unyielding commitment to his profession, was later cited on a surveillance video around 7.15 a.m. driving his black infinity into the parking lot of the Caspill Aquatic Center. The video also captured a white SUV pulling up near Forsyth's car, sparking some intrigue. However, after a few minutes, Forsyth was seen walking away from his car, and then his trail went cold. The alarm bell started to ring when Forsyth failed to turn up for his next shift. It's been a beacon of reliability, his absence deeply alarming. For the entirety of his 15-year tenure at Mercy Hospital, Forsyth had never once skipped a shift. His colleagues recognizing this discrepancy reported him missing to the Cassville Police Department. In the days following his disappearance, a broad search... Operation was launched. Multiple law enforcement agencies, including the Missouri State Highway Patrol, conducted comprehensive searches covering a radius of nine miles around the park. Despite the use of thermal imaging drones and canine dogs, no clues were found regarding Forsyth's whereabout. Parallelly Forsyth's family created a Facebook page titled Find Dr. John Forsyth to raise awareness and seek help from the public. As the search stretched on, Rumors and speculation began to swirl. Did Forsyth's recent divorce or the new cryptocurrency business hold any clues to this disappearance? Forsyth, Forsyth had been court-ordered to pay nearly $20,000 in child support and alimony to his ex following his divorce, but his brother Richard dismissed financial difficulties as a possible cause. He also dismissed speculation linking his disappearance to the cryptocurrency business, despite acknowledging that an overseas associate had previously threatened revenge. The ordeal took a tragic climax on May 30th when a kayaker found Forsyth's body in a lake in Benton County in northwest Arkansas. Richard confirmed the heartbreaking news via a Facebook post. The cause of death, seemingly a gunshot wound, added another layer of mystery to this already baffling case of Dr. John Forsyth's abrupt disappearance and death. As the investigations continue, his grieving family and the community hold on to hope for clarity and closure, yearning to understand the circumstances surrounding this sudden cataclysmic shift in the life of Dr. John Forsythe. This is a very interesting story. I started hearing about it the other day. Uh, my fiance pointed it out, and my first reaction was, I think I've seen him before. <laughs> 
as a doctor. Oh, boy. Because I'm in Benton County in northwest Arkansas where they found the body. And I'm, I don't know where they found the body yet. Uh, but I have some suspicions as to the park that they're talking about in the aquatic center. I'm going to look into that. Um, but it's, uh, I, I, I swear I have a prescription bottle upstairs that he issued whatever it was to me a while back. I think he, he was not my primary care, but I think he was, you know, one of those filling in one day and I saw him for something. I don't remember what, but I swear to you, I've, I've seen this doctor before. Um, and I recognized him from the photos as well. Uh, this is kind of creepy in itself, uh, but this is a very bizarre. It almost has some of the notes of the disappearance of the woman at the Cecil Hotel. Remember that? Yes. Where the camera caught her acting kind of strange, and then she just goes off camera and never to be seen again alive. Uh, this kind of has that feel to it, where he's caught on a camera, white uh, SUV shows up, but he doesn't get in, doesn't go away. Uh, that goes away, and then he's in his car, and eventually he walks off, you know, scene, off the camera, and we don't know exactly you know, what happened uh, after that. Did you see the detail, and I was reading this off of People Magazine, that back in February of 2022, he was previously a victim of a kidnapping. Huh? Yeah, uh-huh. That This is according to People Magazine. It said no police report was filed, but he was the victim of a kidnapping. It's the quote says it was cold. He was zip tied. He was made to feel very unsafe and taken on a car ride with some people to a bridge and was threatened. Richard told the uh, the outlet. So who is Richard here? The brother, I believe. The bro- uh, Yeah, OK. Um, yeah. So that's part of the story that um, from People magazine. So it looks like somebody's got a problem with him. Well, that adds a new layer to this. Pre- I mean, previously kidnapped. I mean, who in most of their life has ever said they've been kidnapped? You know? Oh, I have. <laughs> you have? Yeah, my dad. Okay. Okay. But I mean, that's, you know, that's different. A little different, but yeah. A, but, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it's, it, technically it, it, was, it was, but yeah. how many people can actually say that? Not many. Yeah, that that's true. Uh, how interesting. I want to pull that up. Uh, the and it, it says uh, Richard did not speculate who he believed would be motivated to kill his brother. But boy, I and no charges filed, no police report filed. What the hell's that about? That doesn't make a lot of sense. It, it, sense. If you were kidnapped, why would you not be? Uh, it's not like it's a misunderstanding. Yeah. That's interesting. So something is really a, a, a miss here, big time. Something is definitely a miss here. Uh, and they don't believe that the the death looked like foul play either with the gunshot. I mean, I don't know how that wouldn't possibly. I mean, unless you're just assuming it was a suicide. But he didn't seem to have any reason. He seemed very happy. Everyone said he had just gotten engaged. It was kind of like it was that it was a good point. I get it. I've been divorced, and then you get engaged, and life is back on track, and it's a good time. It's not time that you're going to go and off yourself. Uh, but again, who knows what else is going on in the background? Um, but he doesn't seem to have the people in his life aren't saying that he's been fighting demons or he. You know, yeah, he did go through a divorce and that can create some demons in your head. Yeah. But they're not saying that he ever suffered from depression. You know, if he had this this dark cloud following him and and maybe one day the cloud really got dark. But that's not what this sounds like. It, the morning he was texting his fiance, he said I'll I'll what see see you later or it just it doesn't it doesn't add up. There's no way he killed himself, is what his brother said. Many times he mentioned he might be in danger in February of 2022. Forsyth was kidnapped and released, according to uh, his brother. It was cold. He was zip-tied. He was made to feel very unsafe and taken on a car ride with some people to a bridge, and he was threatened. Exactly what you just said. Yeah, and see, that to me, that's there's a problem here. This guy was targeted. 
there are some people who had an issue with him for whatever reason. What was it medical? You know, that maybe he misdiagnosed something or he wouldn't give somebody medication for something, or was it the cryptocurrency or was it the divorce? But to me, it sounds like there's something else that's not being discussed here. There's going to be some layers to this. I, I, I'd really like to know more about why he did not report that. Yeah. Um, see if you can get an interview with Richard. Um, that's, that's your assignment <laughs> from, okay. from this episode. I'm on it. It's a way to look him up. Um, cause he spoke with Fox news and some other outlets. Um, I'm sure there's a way we could find him. Uh, but that would be rather interesting. Wow. So that puts a whole new, uh, level on this, uh, of what possibly could have happened. It could be interesting to know why or what he was mixed up in that somebody decided to try and kidnap him. Um, I would absolutely put, bizarre. I would that happened last year, right? Yeah, twenty two. So not long ago. So if somebody is angry enough to kidnap you in February of twenty twenty two and it's not resolved, uh, I don't know. This is going to be an interesting one to keep an eye on. Uh, horrible, horrible story, uh, and very sad to see that they found him dead in the lake. Uh, but at least at some point, I mean, the family has his body back. I don't want to say they have resolution because they don't, they don't know how or why any of this happened, but um, it is, it's obviously horribly unfortunate that he's dead, but to be able to have the body, I think that's, that's a and try to find some sort of weird positive out of this. That's good. Uh, rather than sitting there waiting, wondering, you know, without ever knowing, are they alive? Are they dead? It puts some closure to that, but there's going to be a long time that that family is going to be seeking answers. Hopefully they can find some soon. There we go. Yeah. Just tragic. Okay. So if you want to weigh in on this or any of the stories that we are talking about, you can certainly do so. A phone number is 888-5-KILLER, 888-554-5537 to weigh in on anything we are talking about. I'm Tony Bruski for Stacy. Stay with us.